in the shot. Troy and Abed in the morning. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Alright, your professors are here. We are here. This is uh, my name is Ben, aka Phone Chip, aka. I am Reggie, aka Mega Cisco, the darkest thing you've ever seen, if you've ever friended me. But we're gonna talk about, you know, our thoughts on PvP. We've been talking about PvP, um, and we have just no outlet, except now we do. Thank you, internet, for existing. Yeah. So, like, Generally, I'm I'm pleased with PvP. So far, so good. Uh, I, I feel like there's a few things here and there that might need some adjusting or looking into, but I'm having a lot of fun with it, and it's surprisingly uh, more, there's more depth to it than I really thought that there would be. Yeah, it's not the tap fest I expected. Well, I thought we were just gonna like go tap away, but now, you know, the, the way it's set up, it leads to more more thought, you know, and more consideration of your actual typing instead of just does it have staff? And is it super effective against this thing? Did you guys actually pay attention to what you got going on as a Pokemon? Like, oh, uh, I'm a steel type. What up? So yeah, basically, <laughs> steel type. Too good. Yeah, too good. I mean, yeah, that's. I mean, I have these thoughts that come to my head in PvP. And like they just come to me instantly, so I call them instant thoughts. They're like, ah, I should have done that. You know, sometimes you know. But I, I really do think that PvP is pretty much eighty percent team choice, fifteen percent when you use your shields, and five percent carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta charge up those charge moves. You better tap. If you don't see those three rings, high TPS. High tap, tap per, per second. second. <laughs> it's like, have you ever taken Spanish? It's like you're trilling. <laughs> That's how fast you gotta be tapping. Like that. That's not true. You don't have to tap that fast. Just until you see the three rings. Yeah. Okay. And you're good. I mean, sometimes a monster gets big than small, but that's just a visual bug. If you see three rings, you should be good. <sighs> All right. So we're gonna talk about. The big boys? The big boys. So um, for Reggie and myself, uh, we are looking into PvP, but our focus has mainly been on Great League, and that's for a few reasons. First of all, it's the one that's most accessible to everyone. Uh, you could be level 30-something. 20-something. Yeah, and still have Pokemon that are viable for Great League. Um, if you want to compete in the Master League, if you're not level 40 times a couple, it's going to be tough because the Stardust costs are just really, really high. Uh, and you're probably gonna have to spend some rare candies on some Pokemon as well. So it's just tough. So we liked to bring it down to Great League. And not only that, we feel like it opens up the door to a lot of Pokemon that would be otherwise pretty much unviable in any of the other leagues. So that's where our interest lies. And we're gonna talk about some of the monsters of the Great League. Yeah, like seriously, like the viable monsters in Great League are just it's like when you go when you're in junior high and you're the nerdy kid, and oh, tell do tell, <laughs> and, and you somehow have a niche, <laughs> like oh, she noticed you, like oh, because you happen to like a certain anime or something, like oh my gosh, you know, like that would never fly in Master League. It's like dragons are bust. <laughs> yeah, not <laughs> like, almost. Dragons yeah. are bust. All right, you even have to put like a dragon move on your Groudon to, to be competitive in like. Like that's how weird Master League is, yep. and it's like pretty much only the hardcore raiders will have the Stardust expenditure to oh, go yeah. at it. Yeah, I who saves their Stardust anyway. I will. I'll tell you this right now. I spent a million Stardust already on PvP, and none of it, zero of that Stardust, has been for Master League because <laughs> I know how much I like PvP and how much it interests me, but the cost to make it in Master League is. Too much. It's too much. too much for me. All right. So we're going to bring you our all stars. Yeah, drum roll. Oh, wait. Wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh. Hey. There it is. Hey. All right. So we're going to talk about probably. So in Pokemon, like regular, like the main series games, 
Uh, Smogon is like their whatever, their ranking system. And there's a type called overused. There's Ubers, which is, you know, like pretty much mass release, but we don't talk about that because Great League is just way too low to do that. But OU is called overused, and you're going to see pretty much these. If you're trying to really win, one of these bad boys is in your team, unless you're just like an anti meta meta person. Yeah, if you're super sneaky, you might be able to get away with a team without one of these guys, but to be honest, you probably want at least one of these guys on the team. Yeah, real broken. Let's talk about the first broken mon, Altaria. Yeah, Altaria is broken for a couple reasons. Uh, three reasons, I would say, really. Uh, the first reason being its stat spread is really good for Great League. You want things with a lot of HP, it's got that. Um, it's got a good charging fast move. Yeah, good so <laughs> I would say Altaria, uh, among a lot of the other dragons, has the best fast move in the game. Dragon Breath is so much better than any other fast move. It charges very quickly, not as quickly as some moves, but it does the most damage of any fast move as well. So not only does it charge quickly, but it does tons of damage as well. Um, so that is really good. And the third thing is uh, dragon typing is, generally speaking, a pretty good, pretty solid type. It resists a lot of things. So. The one fun thing about this is the mirror match. When you walk into a, you Altaria know, versus <laughs> Altaria, Altaria, just, like, just, all right, you know, it's pretty much 2v2 after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's the fun part about Altaria. It's like, all right. Okay, but yeah, it's pretty much broken. If you're not leading with that, you know, you're leading with a counter. And it lets yeah, me know. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, you're like, that's, All right. that's how most of my teams go. Yeah. So <laughs> this is, I would say, the Meta Mon. Meta Mon is actually the name of Ditto in Japanese. Fun facts. But it's not Ditto, because it's not allowed in Canon League. That's so dumb. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. All right, let's move on to. Should we move on to. Yeah, let's move let's on to Azumarill. Probably the number two. Like, if you haven't spent your Stardust on this, you should. Uh, I will say it costs an awful lot of Stardust because it needs to be like level 38 or yeah. so in order to reach that 14, 80, 90 uh, CP. Unless so. you caught it wild while it's cloudy. It's always cloudy here unless it's snowy. So, But then we haven't been getting those weather spawns lately. So yeah. this bad boy, uh, do you run bubble with it? Uh, I run Bubble. I, I mean, Bubble is another one of those really, really, really solid um, fast moves. Uh, and it's water is a pretty solid type. It's not resisted by that many things. Um, so I, and it's got stab. It's and, just a solid move. And if Steel hits this, it only does non-effective damage. That's one big thing about this. Like you, you, you could probably bring in a Steel type for this, but then if this is in play. Your steel type is walled. Now wait a minute, Reggie. Oh my gosh! You forgot something. What did I forget? So Azumarill is water type, which resists steel, but it's also fairy type, which steel is super effective against. So it's actually neutral, neutral damage. Reggie. Noob. <laughs> See? Wow. More you know. <laughs> yeah, the more you know. Um, regardless, still a very good Pokemon, uh, and this is a dilemma here. This it, it's it's a charge move. Yeah, charge like, move. What charge move do you use? We've been we've been talking about this and like, do you use Ice Beam? Do you use Hydro Pump? Do you use Play Rough? We've listed all the scenarios. Why would you use Play Rough? Uh, Play Rough is Fairy type move. It charges up fairly quickly, um, but it's very powerful. It's super effective against uh, Dragon and Dark. So that means. You've got Altaria, you want something that kills Altaria. And if you've got Play Rough on your Azumarill, that'll surely do it. Um, so that's not bad. Also, we haven't talked about it yet, but Umbreon, Dark type, very strong Pokemon in the Great League. Uh, Play Rough. Gets that, boom. Yeah, Play Rough once again works very well. But again, Altaria is double weak to ice. Ice, ice Beam so will demolish Altaria. It's doubly uh, super effective. Ice against Dragon and Flying super effective. So if you really, really hate this bird, you can use Ice Beam, and then you don't have to worry so much. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a one fun thing is like starting the fight. You have your Altaria up, and then you see their Azumarill. 
you have to switch. You get, get out of there. <laughs> Run away. It's not good. Oh, another thing uh, that we forgot to mention that makes a Zoom rule so good against Altaria is, again, fairy type. Uh, that means it's not. Uh, it's, it resists, it double resists. Yeah, what is it? Immune. Immunity, well, immune, immune right? Which is pretty much a, you only, you take a 60% damage reduction. Yeah, it does very little damage compared to other Pokemon. So a Zoom roll against Altaria, A plus matchup, would recommend. Five out of seven. All right. Perfect. That's a perfect score. <laughs> That's a perfect score. And then, you know, Hydro Pump, if you just want that, you know, sweet, you know, same type attack bonus. Yeah, if you want a whole lot of damage, uh, it's also Hydro Pump is the best move against another Pokemon that we'll mention in a little bit, uh, which has a special place in the meta, and we'll talk about that once we get there. So, but yeah, Azumarill, three different charge moves. You honestly can't go wrong with any of the three. It just kind of depends what you think you're going to have to deal with. Because, like, yeah, it all depends on your local meta. Like, if people are using a lot more grass types and dragons, definitely go for ice beam. But you know, if you're seeing a lot of dark types, you might you know want to have that play rough. But it's not. It's a debate on which move gets left out. Yeah. it's all up to your local play group that you know you play with. You know, if you want to kick butt and chew gum and eat out of gum, Azuma looks like a piece of gum. So don't run out of. <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> Cresselia. <laughs> so the only way to get a Cresselia is by trade, and it's worse if you trade your best friends, because you want a low spread. You want it under, and that's the only way you can get it under fifteen hundred. Yep. I got a buddy, Pooty, who traded for one and got it at CP nineteen nine fourteen ninety nine. Did he really? He oh did. My he totally God, did. He did. And he did it in my face, and he like laughed at me like you jerk. So this is, I would say, you know, before the, this video is going to make this bad boy's stock go up, so might as well invest in your memes right now. Priscilla. It's, it's good. Bottom line, it's good. Uh, super tanky, and, and that's something that's going to be a common theme with all of these Pokemon. Tankiness is king uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to PvP. Uh, obviously, you still need to do some damage, uh, and that but helps. But if you outlast. can outlast somebody, yeah. that's honestly way more valuable the way the numbers work out. I'm no math magician, and I don't know exactly how the math works. Quick but maths. I, I do, yeah, quick maths. I do know that you want tanky things. So, Cresselia, super good. Psychic type is generally pretty good against most things. Um, and no one's really bringing dark types unless they're bringing this. I have not yet seen an Umbreon, but... I guarantee you this thing is going to be a monster. Super strong. Dark is a very weird type that a lot of people, even somewhat experienced Pokemon players, will be like, oh, what's that super effective against again? You know, what, what do I need to bring to resist it? Um, so Umbreon is going to be very good, but like like Red, you said, not very many people bringing dark types yet. Yeah. But yeah, Priscilla, um, it's only on this list because it's just so lumpy and hard to you know it's like play-doh you just keep hitting it and it's like and it's just kind of like nah it's like it doesn't matter be water my friend be water yeah and so with Priscilla, you've got um future sight as its main charge move once again stab super super strong charge move um really good it's got moon blast which is great, uh, super effective against dragons. So if you hate and, Altaria and Dark and Umbreon, if you hate them both, then you give your uh, Cresselia Moonblast. Uh, the one uh, issue with Moonblast is it takes a very long time to charge up. So I would suggest if you have a Cresselia, maybe don't use it as your first one. Because uh, you don't lead with it. Don't lead with it. Yeah. Because you want to make sure that they don't have very many shields to shield um, the big hit from that. Because you're, you're once they're de-shielded, Cresselia is going to be like, oh, a home run. Yeah. And then the last charge move it has, Aurora Beam is... Ice. Uh, it's an ice move. It's fairly mediocre. Um, Extra mediocre. But it will do good things against Altaria. So. Which is... Which you will see. You're, I guarantee you're going to yeah. see that thing. It's too good not to have for most teams. All right. And then grass type here. <laughs> so we had a debate on either, you know, Meganium or Venusaur. And, like, there's cases for both. But, like, 
either grass type will, you know, wall will hit Azumarill, but then it will have Ice Beam. After, maybe. Maybe, depending on your choice. Yeah. But in this case, I would go with like Venusaur because it has access to a poison move as well. Yeah. A poison fast move. So that being said, it'll like hit Azumarill for super effective. And also has access to Frenzy Plant or um, yeah. the poison um, charge. Yeah, so like he was saying, Frenzy Plant. Frenzy Plant is an extremely powerful move, super strong. All of the community day moves, uh, Blast Burn, uh, for the Hydro starters, Cannon, I mean, yeah. Hydro Cannon, Blast Burn, and Frenzy Plant, all three of them, super, super powerful PvP moves. The only issue is that um, the Pokemon behind those moves, particularly for fire types, just aren't that good. Uh, their stat spread isn't that good, or maybe they don't have too too good of uh, and when we say fast type moves. Yeah, so. when we say stat spread, they're leaning toward attack versus being bulky. Yeah, tankiness is yeah, is tankiness key. is key. Like you know, sure you want to attack when you're raiding, but when you're PVPing, you want your stat spread to be on the bulkier side, HP defense. Yeah. So that that's you know our our argument for maybe you know if you don't have access to a Venusaur. You, know, you lose out on you know the poison typing, but you also get the coverage mm -hmm. that uh, Meganium has on uh, with Earthquake. But then again, there's not that many fire types in the Great Wolf meta. Yeah. So. So that's it's honestly, I'm I'm still thinking about which grass type I like better right now. I have a Venusaur only because if I run into a Meganium with my Venusaur, I will win poison. because poison, poison will be super effective. Um, I feel like that yeah, I haven't given it enough thought to be honest because Venusaur will be very weak to Cresselia because of the psychic Psych type uh, and Earthquake is a very very good move that will be good against uh, a lot of other Pokemon that we haven't mentioned yet. The Steel type is going to be prevalent. Steel type, good type. Alright, Umbreon. Spoiler alert, sorry, Steel type is real good. Oh. Uh, but before we get to that, Umbreon, uh, like we were talking about earlier, just a really solid Pokemon. If you were one of those people that, uh, before they changed gyms <laughs> yeah. back in the day, Umbreon was really good for training because its CP was low, but its damage output was very high. It's just a really solid Pokemon, potions, very, too. very tanky, yeah, it, it was very useful back in the day, and it has come back around to be useful in PvP. It's just... Tanky. Yeah. It's there. And if you got lucky enough to evolve one during the community day hours, you know, last resort isn't that bad. It's last resort, normal typing is not a great, great. offensive type. Um, it's resisted by steel and rock, and it's, I forget the word Ghost. already, immune. Ghost is immune to it. Yeah. Um, so you got three types that it really doesn't do very well against, and then it's neutral against the rest. However, um, last resort is just a Pretty strong it's, it's PvP pretty, yeah, move. It's, it's pretty good, yeah. and it'll help with coverage against some of the things that Dark struggles with. So yeah, Umbreon is, is pretty solid. Like either charge move, like either fast move works because you're see your trade off between damage or energy generation. So that's where that's your choice there. And uh, same thing for the charge moves. Like it's like a five damage difference and five energy difference. Yeah. Do you want to get off a couple more of them, or do you want them to hit a little bit harder? You really, it's kind of hard to go wrong with Umbreon because its moves are all good and all pretty much in the same ballpark in terms of what they actually do. All right, now that we talked about these five, we're trying to break them, break them, kill them, destroy, destroy. them. You don't want to, you don't want to deal with them. You don't want to see them. You hate them. All right, so here are, here are, not all. This is not a comprehensive list. Well, However, top five. This is a very, very good list of counters to those big time monsters, those meta Pokemon. Uh, do you want to go from the top or bottom? Um, let's go with Lantern first. Lantern. I love Lantern for a lot of reasons, mostly because it's a goofy looking, weird. It looks like know. he's something you would see under the like the Mariana Trench. It's it's. I don't know. I've always liked Lantern. It's just aesthetically, it's cool. But uh, Lantern has a a lot of things going for it. The big it's thing tiny, right? is Azumarill loses to Lantern, just period. It is not going to beat a Lantern. 
Uh, Lantern has access to Thunderbolt, which is super effective against Azumarill, and uh, Thunderbolt is an extremely good move. Charges up very fast, does a lot of damage. Uh, it'll be super effective against Azumarill. Uh, it has access to Hydro Pump as well for that stab. Uh, it hits neutral on Altaria. It's neutral on Altaria with the Thunderbolt is yeah. the resistance from Dragon. Uh, and on my Lantern, I gave it uh, Water Gun because Water Gun is a really, really solid uh, quick move. And you really are more backing on the charge move to do your damage with Lantern. So the choice of quick move is sort of not that not that important, but I use it for coverage. So you, you do your damage with Thunderbolt against certain Pokemon, and you do your damage with Water Gun against other Pokemon, and you can do that at the same time with the yeah. same Pokemon. All right, yep. So Lantern, solid counter pick. Solid. All right, Steelix. So I, I don't know if we've mentioned this, but Steel type is pretty good. It resists, like, everything. It's so many things. It's Don't just do anything. so dumb. Like, like it's not a great offensive type, but to have steel as your typing is pretty good. Yeah. You want that. So, dragon and flying, not very effective. Uh, fairy, not very effective. And steel is super effective against fairy. fairy. Psychic, not very effective. Grass, not very effective. Lawnmower, thank you. So, there are an awful lot of things that Steelix. Pretty much, you send in Steelix and your opponent goes, well, I can't do anything at all. That's it. I mean, Steelix is weak to Earthquake, so if you have Epigenium, you have that Earthquake. I mean, it's weak to Ground, so yeah, you have that Earthquake. Yeah. Uh, one thing, though, a lot of people don't know this because I believe it used to be the case that Dark was uh, not very effective against Steel. They changed that. Dark is neutral against Steel now. Um, so Umbreon will probably beat Steelix. I haven't done, you know, I haven't run a simulation, done the math, whatever, um, but I think it would still be. All right. Now let's talk about Skarmory. This guy used Skarmory against me, and I knew I was walled. Yeah. I was like, damn it! <laughs> Grr! Yeah, uh, as I, I, I heard him, and he was just like, I, I could tell he knew he lost as soon as the yep. Skarmory came in. Mm -hmm. uh, Skarmory is and has been in the main series games, just one of the best walls. It is so hard to take down. It's only weak to electric and fire. And like we said before, fire is, is, is super underrepresented. There aren't very many Pokemon that are fire type that are good or that have a fire type move that are good or greatly. Um, yes. It's just, there's just, you're not gonna run into that many fire. I mean, the balance of Skarmory is it does not, it has pitiful damage output, but my gosh, if you see it and you can't outrace it, you're done. Yeah. Because, like, it's just, once I saw it, it was like, uh, I looked at how many Pokemon I had, how many shields I had, because it's not really a threat, you know, but if it's going to outlast you, you lost. And that's exactly what the Skarmory is. Like, and it's just, you know, it'll, it'll wall some of these Pokemon mm -hmm. over here, so... Yeah, so it'll do very well against Altaria. It'll do fairly well against Azumarill. Uh, it'll do very well against Cresselia. And it'll absolutely destroy these grass types. Neither neither one of those grass types will touch it. Um, Earthquake will be the best thing you can do, and that'll be neutral damage. Mm -hmm. um, and you just, you're in trouble. If that's the matchup <laughs> yeah. you've got. Um, so I think that's... Oh, and also it has access to Sky Attack, Sky Attack. which is an excellent uh, which was move for PvP. When, when Lugia came back, oh, let's make it the better move, and they did. Yes, they did. All right, well, Skarmory is good. Uh, so this next one up here is a, a funky one, and I have a team with, with it, but uh, it's sort of, I would put an asterisk next to it because... If you're not in a matchup that's good for it, it's not that good. It's an okay PvP Pokemon. Its stat spread is not ideal. It's a little too attack-oriented, a little too attack-oriented. The thing is, it gets access to a very quick charging uh, charge, or quick Ice, move. Quick move. Uh, which one is it? Ice, uh, powder, Ice snow? Snow? powder Snow? Ice Powder Snow. Powder Snow. Powder Snow. I could check mine, but that would take... <laughs> multiple minutes 
and I don't have that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, it's got the quick charging, quick move, and then it also has access to Avalanche, which is an unbelievably strong charge move. Really good, and Ice is a very, very good offensive uh, type. Especially in this league, when E's got some of them out. Yeah. It will do so much damage to Altaria. Yeah, they won't have what? Um, Any flying type. And any flying type. It'll be really problematic. The grass types will be in big trouble against it as well. Um, and then it also gets access to, is it Drill Run or Bulldoze? Bulldoze. Bulldoze. So Bulldoze is run. an okay move, but it's ground type. And like we said before, or actually I don't know if we mentioned it yet, but ground is super effective in steel. steel. And you need something that's going to be able to take out a steel type. Because if you don't, and one shows up, yeah, that's, that's a problem. Um, so yeah, I like the I like Pilot Swine. I don't use it in all of my lineups. I use it in uh, a select few here and there. Uh, very good in certain matchups. Sort of medium for others. All right, let's move on to the last one because we're running out of time. Like in my Super time. running out of time. <laughs> okay, Fortress surprise sleeper here. Bug Steel. Bug Steel is a very good combination of types, except against fire, which we've talked mm -hmm. about a lot. Fire, it doesn't, really it doesn't do. exist. Look at that. This whole list here, there's no fire. Yeah. So Not a single move, even. No fire types, no fire moves. No fire They're moves. just not that good. Uh, I tried to use one in a team, and it's great if you run into something that it's super effective against, but if you don't, it's just a lion. It's not, I wouldn't recommend it. But yeah, Fortress, it walls those fire types completely, it'll wall Altaria, it'll wall Cresselia, it'll wall the grass, it'll super wall the grass types, Double and it will be super effective. It'll be super effective against Umbreon, uh, let's see, against Steelix, it'll be a decent one. Um, it's just overall pretty good. Uh, the only issue is with it, if you run up against something where both of you are dealing each neutral damage, you're probably not going to win because its stats are okay and its moves are okay. okay. But you know, once you see the, once you see it, you're like, all right, can you win the damage race? So that's just like the top part. Like, it's just a damage race part. Like once you see these steel types, like you know you're in for a long PvP. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a while. That or just hit the quick button. So there's uh, that too, and just make sure they don't get chased in the snow and forest. Just <laughs> be a jerk. Don't don't be a jerk. Be team instinct about it. <laughs> oh, one thing I forgot to mention, we forgot to talk about was Steelix. Steelix has a very odd selection of quick moves. One of them is Iron Tail, I think. Iron Tail and Dragon Tail. And Dragon Tail. So Iron Tail is not great because Steel as an offensive type is not great. Mm -hmm. However, Dragon Tail is great because of this. I guarantee you, you need something on your team that will beat this guy. If you're picking like a team of six, uh, definitely. You, know, you have to have some way to deal with this. And I would honestly say, if your team doesn't have two ways to deal with it, you're probably not doing it right. Mm -hmm. So, am I in the frame? You should totally frame. Well, um, that... Hello. <laughs> we ran out of time, like uh, my camera ran out of uh, space, so we're using the phone. But that's our analysis. Can't spell analysis without... <laughs> uh, <laughs> lysis, which is uh, yes. it's, uh, it's, that's a it's scientific lysis. term, yes. uh, which we won't get into. Yeah. And that's definitely what Reggie was going for. Yeah, what he said. So... I hope you guys are enjoying Great League. I totally am. It's just so fun seeing random stuff. Like, keep picking those weird things. Keeps it fun. You don't always have to pick these. You know, unless you're like, I gotta win, I gotta win. But you don't always gotta win, because sometimes, you know, you gotta take the L and then bounce back. And get your Sinos down. Yeah, that's right. So, you guys be excellent, and see you next train and tower. Thank you, Ben, for joining the panel today. Oh, absolutely, anytime. Yeah. yeah. And keep man spreading. Don't ever stop. Peace. <laughs>